The Challenge of the Yukon. On King! On your husky! The wonder dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the Challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. It was early spring in the North Country... The rivers were frozen and the snow covered the ground, but the days were lengthening. Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police was making a patrol from Selkirk to Whitehorse. About five miles out of town, he stopped his dog team as he recognized a prospector. Oh, looking! Hi, Huskies! Hello there, Bill. Hello, Sergeant Preston. How are you? Fine, thanks. Anything new around here? Nope. I'm just on my way over to see Pete Tracy and little Joan. Ain't seen them for over a week. Well, I'll go with you. Maybe Pete will give us some supper. Well, I sure he will. Come on along. Hunting! Hun, you husky! How's Pete getting along? Just fine. His wife dying the way she did is pretty hard on him. His claim sure paying off, though. He's taking lots of gold out of it. Must be hard for that little girl of his, Joan. It's downright pitiful the way you see the way she's tried to take her mother's place. Poor kid ain't bigger in a minute, and she's even tried to cook and keep the house clean. Rather rough on a nature, old. Well, there isn't much Pete can do. He had to get the gold out of his claim, and he hasn't a relative in the world to send Joan to. Poor kid. But Pete figures he's got enough now, or will have at the end of the summer, to leave the Yukon and take Joan back to civilization. Glad to hear it. Now, here's the cabin. Hawking! Hey, yes. <laughs> door's open, huh? Well... <laughs> Guess they must have gone out and not shut it tight. We better get in there and poke up the fire before they get back. Hmm, nobody here. They probably, uh, Bill, look. But, my gosh. Pete. He's dead. Shot through the head. Dead. Well, I wonder where Joan is. He ain't in here. Joan! Joan! No sign of her, Sergeant. Bill, did Pete have any enemies? Not that I know of. Uh-huh. Wait a minute. Sergeant, look. Here's why they killed him. Robbery. They found out where his gold was hidden. See that loose board pulled up out of the floor? Yes. That's where he kept it. He showed it to me once. He had between fifteen and twenty thousand dollars worth of gold hidden there. Well, why didn't he put it in the bank? I told him to, but it's so far to town, and he thought it was safe. Well, it's gone. Well, why wouldn't they kill Joan too? Where do you think it's, it's... Uh, easy for some people to kill a man, but when it comes to murdering a defenseless little girl, even a hardened criminal will hesitate. But uh... come on, Bill. There must be some tracks around here somewhere. Here, King, come here, boy. Look, Preston, here's some tracks leading north. Yes, tracks of two men. And here's some smaller ones. They must be Jones. The snow's all disturbed, and her tracks don't go no further. She probably wouldn't go with them, and they picked her up. I'm following this trail right away. Is it all right if I go with you, Preston? Pete was a good friend of mine. All right, Bill, I may need you in case we find Jones first. If they abandon her somewhere, you'll have to bring her back. Uh, we'll put Pete's body in his bunk and bury him when we get back. Darkness had fallen, but Sergeant Preston and Bill kept on. King, Preston's huge lead dog, led them on the trail of the murderers when it was too dark to see the tracks in the snow. It was past dawn when they came to Lake Labarge. Oh, King! Hi, King! Here's the lake. You suppose they tried to cross it? Oh, it's too dangerous this time of the year. I wish it were lighter. Dawn's just breaking. I can't see very far. Hey, Sergeant. Huh? Look out there on the lake. Can you see somebody? What? Yes, I can barely see them. 
Faster than they've gone through the ice. Oh, the fools. They should never have tried to cross. Come on, Bill. Jones with them. We'll leave the dogs here. Uh, bring that rope. It's too late. They're half a mile away. We'll have to try. Here, King. Hurry, Bill. <laughs> Careful, Bill. This ice is treacherous. Uh, that's no use. There's a hole they went through. Not a sign of any of them. Poor little Joan. Oh, if it went for her, I'd say good riddance. Dirty rats taking a child across here this time of year. Well, nothing we can do. Come on, King. We may as well go back. The bright spring sunshine dazzled the eyes of little Joan. The memory of a night of terror and horror had left her, and she gazed with puzzled wonder in the face of a little old man who was bending over her anxiously. His gray hair hung to his shoulders from under his cap, and a long white beard hid the lower part of his face, but his eyes were a lively blue. Joan found she was wrapped in blankets, and a big fire was burning beside her. The little old man spoke in a quiet voice. Now, don't you get scared, honey. There's nothing going to hurt you. Try drinking this warm tea. Yeah, that's the girl. Sure was lucky I come along. You'd have froze clean through. You, you found me? I sure did. You lost? Those, those men, they were taking me away. I ran away from them in the middle of the night while they were sleeping. Men were taking you away? Where's your home? Home? They killed my dad. Now, 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 don't talk about it. You can tell me later. You're safe now, honey. <laughs> yeah, just try drinking some more of this tea. There, that's it, honey. Now, what's your name? It, it's Joan. Joan Tracy. What's yours? Mine? Well, I'm, I'm just Jed. You can call me Uncle Jed if you want to. Uncle Jed? Yeah, and as soon as you feel a mite stronger, I'm going to take you to my house and feed you. Now, take just a little more of this tea. Thank you. I'll bet you never saw the kind of a house I live in. It's way back in the side of a mountain. The most beautiful cave you ever did see. You, you live in a cave? Yeah, and you're going to be the first human being besides me ever to see it. Spring had passed, and summer was well on the way in the Yukon. Streams gurgled down the mountains from the snow-capped peaks to the rich green valleys below. Sergeant Preston, on horseback, with his dog King running free beside him, was cutting cross-country over the slopes toward Whitehorse. King stopped to drink from a small stream toward the base of a hill, and Preston stopped his horse for a moment to rest. Oh, oh there. Let's rest a while. Uh, what's wrong, King? Where are you? Ready, son? Oh, what's wrong with it? Find something, fella? Well, what's this? A child's sweater lying beside the stream. Hasn't been here very long, either. Well, that's funny. No one lives within 15 miles of here. I wonder if you can trace her, King. Come on, let's try it. All right, fella. Find her. Leaving his horse, Preston followed King as the dog led him downstream through the thickets. The mounty paused suddenly and softly called King to his side as the clear laughter of a child rang out from a clump of trees ahead. Here, King, behind me, fella. Oh, you scared him. Did you see that beaver who was on guard snap his tail on the water, huh? Well, that's the danger signal to the rest of them to get out of sight. I'm sorry, Uncle Jack. I just couldn't help laughing. He looked just like a funny little old grandfather sitting yes, there. Yes, yes, you're right. And if he had a white beard, he'd look just like me. Oh, no. He won't look like a beaver with a beard. Well, you want to stay here till they come back and finish building the dam, or are you tired? You've been sitting in one place a long time. Oh, I could stay here all day and watch them. The way they gnawed those trees down with the teeth and made them fall just right and then plastered up the chinks with their tails. Why, it's the most wonderful thing I ever saw. Yeah, men can learn a lot from animals. 
Beavers know as much about engineering as humans, and they don't have to go to school to learn. Well, Joni, we'd better get uh, back. Come on. It's Joan. Joan? So who is it? What? Joan, it's really you. And King, where did you come from? Why, Joan, I thought you were... How'd you get here? Uncle Jack found me. It, it was... Oh. It was when... Now, remember, Joan, you promised me you'd never talk about it again. I'll tell the sergeant all about it. I'm Jed Haskins, Sergeant. How do you do, Jed? We've been watching some beavers build a dam. Oh. Uncle Jed knows all about wild animals, and they know him, and aren't even afraid of him. Could we take him up to our cave and show him the baby fox, Uncle Jed? Why, sure, sure. Maybe he'll stay and have supper with us. How about it, Sergeant? Why, yes, I'd like to. I left my horse back there. Oh, Sergeant, I can't wait to show you everything. It's... Oh, it's just like fairyland. <laughs> The bright moon bathed the mountain slope in silver as Preston sat before the large, comfortable cave that was Uncle Jed's home. A deep silence had settled over the Northland, broken only by the occasional howl of the coyotes. You hear them, Sergeant Preston? Yes, sir. I used to be afraid. But then Uncle Jed told me they look up at that beautiful moon and they just have to throw back their heads and sing. Oh, well, I guess that's right. Look how the moon makes my beads shine. Your beads? Uh-huh. Uncle Jed made them for me. Aren't they pretty? What? What a gold nugget. Joni, I think it's your bedtime, honey. You can talk to Sergeant Preston again in the morning. All right, Uncle Jed. Sergeant Preston, tomorrow morning you can help me feed the big bat, bat bear and her cubs. She brings them here every day. I'll see you in the morning, Joan. Good night. Good night. Good night, Uncle Jed. <laughs> Say good night, honey. She's the happiest child I've ever seen, Jed. When did you find her? Well, Sergeant, I found her early one morning. You you know what happened to her father? Yes, and I thought Joan was drowned. The men who killed her father went through the ice on Lake Labarge. I didn't know that. Joan escaped from them the first time they made camp. She was lost when I found her wandering in the hills. Poor child, the shock must have been terrific. Yeah, she was in bad shape, all right. It took a month to get her back to normal. I, I suppose I should have brought her back, Sergeant, but... She said she didn't have nobody, and it's been so nice having her. I guess I didn't realize before I was so lonely. She hasn't anybody, then. Of course, I know she can't stay up here with me through the winter, and I ain't got too many summers left to go, but but I'm going to miss her. Why do you live like this, Dad? Those nuggets you gave Joan, where'd you get them? Uh, I got plenty of them, and there's lots more where they come from. But years ago... I decided I didn't like the world of men. Here I've had the peace I want, away from murder and greed. But I can't have Joan. She'll need schooling. Now, Jed, and stop you. worrying. I'm not going to take her away from you. This has been the best thing that could have happened to her. Sergeant Preston, you mean that you, I... Uh, but... You can adopt her legally, Jed. Of course, you'll have to send her away to school in the winter. Hey, but Summers, <laughs> she can come back up here in the summer. The few summers I have left. You know, Jed, I think that those summers will teach Joan more than she'd ever learned in school. Sergeant Preston, I, I don't know how to tell. Well, King's doing it for you. He looked up at the moon, and as Joanie said, he's so happy he just had to throw back his head and sing. <laughs> These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. Larry McCann speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.